So you say you want to be an actor, but you still haven't started your acting career. Not for real, for real. Let's talk about it because I know the real reason why you haven't started. Let's talk. <laughs> What's up? I'm Christine Horn, the booking magnet. Welcome back to another episode of the Hollywood Bound Actor Podcast. I'm so happy that you are listening on the audio. What's up? If you're watching here on YouTube, what's up replay watchers? Love you guys. I am so pumped about this. Look, we're going to do some real talk today. Real talk. I talk to hundreds of actors who reach out to me for coaching, and say they want to be an actor, but they don't ever quite get the ball rolling. The, 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 the truck never quite revs up the engine, so to speak. And I might be talking to you and listen, let me just say this in advance. If you can't say amen, you just might say, ouch. Okay. Now this isn't really for my, uh, advanced actors today. This episode is for my, um, what some people like to call aspiring actors, or those of you who have been working on a smaller scale, but say you want to work on a larger scale, but still haven't quite taken the leap, I wanna to talk to you, all right? And before we get into today's episode, just know I don't like to leave you hanging. I have a free resources resource for you, and it's called How to Start Acting. Okay. It's a five part video course. It's totally free where I really break down how you can really start acting for real, for real. So we don't got to keep having these uh, conversations. Okay. <laughs> so I want you to visit the link, how to start acting.com and spend some time with me. And I will walk you through, um, a lot more, um, in depth steps you can take to actually launch your acting career. I say this because I am the go-to person. I've been doing this for over 30 years at this point. And so of course, people have seen me on TV and movies. I've done Broadway and people, you know, some people look up to me. They find me, I'm their mentor. I'm their fake coach in their head. I'm their big sister, cousin, auntie in their head. And so I get a lot of questions all the time about how to get started being a content creator, you know, in this, in this social media, digital age for since 2017. I talk a lot about the, this industry and I've been so blessed to coach and mentor so many actors in our Hollywood bound actors community who have actually done the things, done the work, taken the classes, taken the pictures, um, coach with me or coach with other coaches. And now they are actually seeing their dreams like come to life. Like I get nothing, nothing. There's no greater, well, there's a lot of greater, better feelings, but there's a great feeling when I turn on my computer, when I turn on my TV, when I'm on the plane and I watch one of my clients or somebody that I've had a chance to connect to and, and mentor and give some advice to, and to see them on the screen just brings me so much joy. And if you're listening or watching, I want you to know that you're no different. Like you can have this if you wanted to. But I want to just speak, I want to shine a light on some of the real reasons why you probably haven't gotten as far as you want to go so that you can, we can stop pretending, right? Let me start by saying, first of all, it's okay if you don't want to be a full-time actor. That is okay. I say this all the time. Your level of success and what is uh, real acting for you is going to be different than somebody else, right? For you, you might be happy doing two short films a year and performing at the church. Someone else might say, I want to win an Emmy and I want to be a TV star. And that's their, that's their journey. And that's okay. And you know, you may be watching and just have your little toe, your baby toe in the water of this acting thing. And I just want to speak some truth onto some things. Number one, this industry is not easy, right? And, and please be, please know, and no part of this is me trying to discourage you from being an actor because I love being an actor. I've been doing it for a very long time, but I want us to be real. So we stop. Um, I can't think of the word right now. Uh, it'll come to me. The reality of being in this industry is that it can be tough. There's no one way for any, for everybody, you know, everybody has a different journey, different ladders to success. But this industry is filled with a lot of no's, a lot of perceived rejection, um, a lot of things you want but don't get, right? It's not like, you know, for some of you who've gone to school for, for theater or film, like just because you have a degree means nothing. Not in this industry. Degree is nice. Great. Glad you had that college experience. But it doesn't mean anything in this industry if you can't act, if you can't if you don't understand how the business works, if you don't 
uh, do a good job at auditioning, like you're not going to book gigs, right? So the reality of this industry is that it can look very glitzy and glamorous and you see celebrities on red carpets and all the things, but it's a lot of freaking hard work. And that's what most people won't tell you. You watch TV and movies and say, oh, I could do that. But, you know, I recently, when I was in Canada working on a project, I had literally had 18 hour days, some days, 18 hours. So I need you to be as fresh in hour two as you're going to be. I need you to be that fresh in hour 16, 17, when we call action again, 17 hours later. Can you do that? Right? I remember when I was... <laughs> Many moons ago, when I used to do background work, there was a movie that shot in Atlanta, Georgia called Mama Flora's Family. It had Cicely Tyson, Queen Latifah, Erica Alexander, like, and I was a background actor in like many of the decades. Like I just popped up everywhere. And my brother and sister and my mom was like, they were, they wanted, they needed all these townspeople. And I was like, y'all want to come do it with me? Plus I needed a ride. It was somewhere out in the country in Georgia. And so my mom wrote my brother and sister who were really little at the time. Honey, my little sister and brother were over it, especially my little sister. They gave her them little, because it was a period piece. They gave her these little, these little hard shoes. And after they asked that kid to, to walk past again for the fourth, fifth or 10th time, my sister was over it. She was like, this is not for me. Brother was tired. My mother had a great time. But my brother and sister was like, no, no, thank you. And that's how it is for a lot of people. It sounds great to say, I want to be an actor until you really have to get in it. And you might find yourself saying, no, thank you. No, thank you. I didn't know it took all this. Good actors make this industry look easy. And let me tell you, it is not. It can be so much fun. It can be exhilarating. It, you know, it can be fancy many times, but there's a lot of grunt and grinding and foundational work that happens before you get to any of the glitz, before you get to the big checks. Any professional actor will tell you how many jobs they worked for free, they did for the art, they did for exposure, they did just for the practice, they did but got stiffed. Honey, we got stories. So I want you to understand like when people say you have to love it, if you don't love it, don't do it. It's real because it's going to come with ebbs and flows, ups and downs. There's going to be times where you are very busy and there's times where it's very slow. I also want to speak to my grown people out here because I get a lot of grown people. When I say grown, I mean grown people who have responsibilities, perhaps families, kids. You know, you may live in a town that is small or a country that is small. And the reality is that you can get good at acting where you are. But at some point, if your dreams are bigger than what your space allows or offers, will you be able to move? Are you willing to pick up your family? When I moved back to LA in Los Angeles in 2017, I was married at the time. And I told my husband then, I said, I have to get to LA. Like, I have to, like, this is the time. And I was like, I'm going, are you coming? <laughs> and he was like, I'm not leaving you, letting you go by yourself. And I was so grateful that he came with me. But that's it. there's that moment of sometimes like it, it just, it messes with the family structure. And I know for a fact, I get a lot of people who reach out to me for coaching, but they don't even really want to coach with me because they know once they coach with me, they won't be able to say that they don't know. Once you have information, you can't stay stuck. See, when you're in this space where you might be right now, and again, you might say, ouch or amen. It's easier to say, I don't know. I don't know how the industry works. I want more. I know I got the talent. I can do it. I just don't know what, this, what steps to take. It's easy to say that because if we stay stuck and confused, we can keep blaming it on that. We can keep blaming it on, on, our, on our location. We can keep blaming it on, on all sorts of things. But when we have information, mm, now we're forced with taking action. And now we just have to own, I'm not taking action because I'm scared. I'm not taking action because I might really be so good at this thing. What happens if I get an audition and I can't get off work? What happens if I get an audition and book it and I got to be away from home for two weeks filming? I, I have kids. I, I don't want to get a babysitter. Or I don't want to leave my family. Or will I lose my husband? Will I lose my wife? Will my girlfriend or boyfriend dump me because I've been gone? Will they feel neglected? 
you know what? I'm just going to self-sabotage, procrastinate, say I want it, want it, want it, but not really do the work to get it because it's easier to just blame it on all these other things and circumstances than to just say, I'm scared. Because what if it works out? Mm. I know. I already know. You're nodding your head. You're throwing a shoe at me. I get it. I get it because I've been there. But I made a choice that I'm willing to bet on myself. But I also want to be honest with you about this industry. It comes with sacrifice. It can be a very selfish industry. You become very selfish. And there's no other way to say that. You know how many vacations I've had to cancel last minute? Weddings I've missed. Birthdays I've missed. From being on the road to being on set. Trip booked. Flight booked. And then an opportunity that could potentially change the trajectory of my career comes in. I'm supposed to say no to that? I've disappointed more people in my life than you can possibly imagine. Loves of my life that... Kept moving because I chose me. I chose my career. I chose to express myself the way that I felt God meant for me to. This is my gift. Like, and how, and anyone who comes between that will, will never win. It's very selfish. And I'm willing to say it out loud. There's, but there's a lot of actors out here operating in that same way. That's why people are like, why is someone so single? Or why someone so don't have no kids? Or why someone so... You know, you choose different things at different stages of your life. Another thing you'll face is really the question of, am I good enough? You know, a lot of people say they want to do this. They, again, I, I'm, I know this because y'all come to me. I do career consultations. I coach in the Hollywood Bound Actors Facebook group online and my book more TV course. I know. So I hear your deep, dark thoughts and I've had my own. But something that you have to figure out is it's nice to say you want to do it. It's nice to say you want to be on that next Netflix show or Tyler Perry show or HBO show or on ABC or NBC. But then you wonder, am I good enough? Maybe you booked one gig. But can you sustain it? Because now you have pressure of family and friends asking, what you going to be on next? What you doing next? And you don't have the answer. And who wants to deal with asking themselves, are they good enough? I don't want to have that conversation. Another thing that... Um, a lot of people don't like to talk about is the financial investment. It takes money to, to stay sharp in this industry. You will always have to pay for something, it, it, whether it's a website membership for your agents and managers to submit you for things, new headshots, classes, books, seminars, workshops, travel, gas. It's not cheap. It's an investment, it's a, you know, and for, for some people, it's just this inexpensive hobby because it never quite becomes a full-time career. So for a lot of you, a lot of us, it can be a very expensive hobby that you'd be like, what, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? <laughs> am I getting in as much as I'm putting out? Ask any actor who's been doing this for a minute, whether they've had large success on your scale or not, they will, they will have thought these thoughts. The fact of the matter is becoming an actor, a working actor, is about more than red carpets. It's about more than the glitz and glam. There's so much. You are faced with yourself more times than not. Your characters will force you to deal with yourself and challenge yourself and question your beliefs and what you're willing to do. And you'll see yourself in characters and you know, then we haven't even talked about the process. We I haven't even gone into the, the, the emotional toil it can take on you to take on all other energy and create care. That's a whole separate video. So I'm, I'm sharing this video. I don't know how this is coming across. It was on my spirit. It was on my heart to share. I'm not sharing this again so that you don't do it because I love being an actor. I want to see you on my TV screen.
on my movie screen. Like my client Felicia Pearl and Posse, who played young Seely in the Color Purple musical. We worked together for six months. She had did The Lion King. And then she said, she came to me, said, Christine, I want to do film and TV. And, you know, she started doing self-tapes in her kitchen, in her hallway. <laughs> And then, the, and then she was writing and creating a production company. And then the first gig she booked on camera was the Color Purple musical. I was like, really? Oprah Winfrey's going to be our standard? Okay. <laughs> like that? The amount of joy that I have? And then she got nominated for an NAACP award? I want that for you. If you want it for yourself. And it's okay if you don't. You don't have to keep saying that you want to be an actor if you don't really want to be. But if you do, I want you to first start by grabbing my training, howtostartacting.com. And once you get through with that, if you still rocking with me, there are other options for us to work together in the future. Or even if we're not working together, you should feel inspired and have enough information to take it to your next level whatever that is, judgment free. This is your life, you get to live it how you want. But I just want us to stop pretending that we really want something that we don't really want. Or like, let's get off the pot and start taking some inspired action. I hope you receive this message with the love intended, okay? All right, I'll see you next time. I appreciate you tuning in to the Hollywood Bound Actor Podcast. Remember to shine bright. Ooh, shine bright like the star that you are.